In a world where the value of human life has become paramount, can you imagine a time when people were boiled alive as a form of punishment? Imagine the utter terror of slowly being lowered into a cauldron of scalding liquid at the same time the thunderous roar of the oil muffles your cries. As we explore this gruesome form of punishment devised by twisted minds and the victims subjected to it, prepare yourself for an eerie voyage back in time to the Middle Age era where the dark core of human cruelty lies. Keep watching to the end of the video to learn more about the story. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Medieval European Era Once upon a time, in the dark and brutal medieval period, a myriad of punishments awaited those who dared break the law. And yet, among them all, one gruesome practice stood out above the rest. The dreaded sentence of being thrown into a boiling cauldron, pot, or kettle. This dreadful punishment was prevalent throughout the 13th to the 16th centuries and was not confined to a single region. According to several reports, this brutal punishment was meted out in countries such as Scotland, England, and even the mighty and holy Roman Empire. The mere thought of being thrown into a searing cauldron filled with boiling liquid sent shivers down one's spine. And yet, this was the reality for those unfortunate souls who fell afoul of the law in the Middle Ages. The Rule of King Henry VIII The reign of King Henry VIII, which spanned from 1509 to 1547, was a time when poisoning was a great fear. King Henry was known to be a profoundly paranoid man, and the thought of being poisoned was one of his greatest fears. Because of this, it was considered one of the most heinous crimes of the time, with severe punishment for such a crime. To protect against his fear, King Henry VIII passed a law in 1531 under the Knife Statute, making poisoning an act of high treason with the recommended punishment for such a crime being death by boiling. However, King Henry VIII would only enforce the law later that year after a tragic incident rocked the country. During a grand feast hosted by John Fisher, the Bishop of Rochester, in 1531, a cook, Richard Roos, had added a substance to the porridge he had prepared for his employer and his guests causing 17 of the guests to fall critically ill and two to die after eating the food. Suspicion immediately fell on Richard Roos, the cook, who fled after the incident. He was accused of poisoning the food with the intent to kill the bishop, even though the bishop himself did not eat the poisoned food. Unfortunately, one of the two who had died was a member of the bishop's household, Burnett Kerwin, and a beggar named Alice Trippett. And being a bishop, his reputation was at stake because he could have easily been accused of killing the poor. With this, Richard Roos was declared wanted and an arrest was put out for him. While fleeing, he was captured and imprisoned. During his trial, Richard Roos maintained that he was innocent, but after being subjected to severe torture, Roos eventually confessed that a stranger had given him a white powder to add to the food which he had done, but it was supposed to be a harmless prank to incapacitate his fellow servants, not to kill anyone. With his confession, he was deemed guilty of high treason and sentenced to death by boiling under King Henry VIII's reign. Richard Roos was executed in London Smithfield on April 15, 1532. His execution was a gruesome spectacle to behold. He was tied in chains and suspended above a large pot of boiling water, which he was lowered into three times until he was dead. This execution was so brutal that it was said that he roared mighty loud, and divers women, who were big with child, 
did feel sick at the sight of what they saw and were carried away half dead. It was a punishment considered excessive and stomach churning, even for that time. Richard Roos's execution was talked about for years and even made its way into Shakespeare's plays. Tragically, Richard Roos was most likely a pawn in a game he knew nothing about, but paid dearly for it with his life in the most horrific way. Some people believed it could have been a setup by King Henry himself, who was known to have wanted the bishop dead. It was rumored that Richard was given the poison by a royal family member and used as a scapegoat for the failed attempt on the bishop's life. These accounts would most likely be the truth, considering years later, King Henry VIII would orchestrate a brutal and cruel execution for the Bishop of Rochester for being a critic. However, the execution of Richard Roos was not an isolated incident. It would be the catalyst for the punishment to be institutionalized by King Henry VIII. In 1542, a woman accused of using poison, Margaret Davy, would also be gruesomely executed by boiling to death. But in 1547, King Edward VI repealed the 1531 acts that provided for the execution of boiling water and oil implemented during the reign of King Henry VIII. Dark Times in Medieval Scotland In Medieval Scotland, boiling in water and oil was a preferred execution method in the 13th and 14th centuries. In 1222, the bloody Earl of Orkney, John of Haraldson, allowed angry husbandmen to boil to death the Bishop of Caithness and a monk named Surlo. The bishop had angered the farmers aggressively to collect the levy, and the Earl saw fit to allow the gruesome punishment as retribution. Years later, in 1321, another chilling incident took place in Scotland. A nobleman, Williams de Sewell, was accused of being a sorcerer and a conspirator against Robert the Bruce. After his trial, he was sentenced to be boiled alive at the Nine Stand Rig. The execution was carried out in front of a horrified crowd. It warned anyone who dared to go against the king's wishes or practice black magic. The Reign of the Ruthless Emperor Nero in the ancient city of Rome, Emperor Nero, a ruler who ruled from 54 to 68 AD, was infamous for his cruelty and tyranny, making Rome experience its worst. Nero's reign was marked by the brutal and heinous punishment tactics he would unleash on people deemed unfit to live and those who committed crimes such as murder and treason. Nero had a unique punishment technique that he favored which would cause the most unimaginable pain and agony, the punishment of boiling in oil and water. The victim of this punishment would first be stripped of their clothes and then placed in a large cauldron filled with boiling water or oil. The mixture was often scented with fragrant herbs and spices to torment the victim. As the victim slowly boiled alive, they would experience excruciating pain and agony. The boiling water and oil would scald the skin, causing it to blister and peel off. But that wasn't all. The heat would also cook their internal organs, causing them to die slowly from the inside out. Although this punishment was initially adopted to serve as a deterrent to others who might want to consider committing similar heinous crimes, Emperor Nero used it to kill thousands of Christians his political enemies, and those who opposed him in the Roman Empire. He wanted to reinstate fear in the people and remind them of the cruelty of their ruler. While no precise details were known about the victims and how often it was used during Nero's reign, many reports showed that he was ruthless with this punishment. However, Nero was not the only cruel ruler to have ever used this punishment to execute offenders in the Roman Empire. Throughout Roman history, several other instances of this inhuman execution were recorded. In 1392, in Nuremberg, a man who raped and murdered his mother was boiled alive. Similarly, in 1452 and 1471, and Danzig and Stralsund, respectively, 
coin forgers were boiled to death in a public display of justice. These executions were intended to serve as a deterrent to others who might consider engaging in such activities. They were carried out with great solemnity and ceremony. But not only the coin forgers were eligible to face this cruel execution, people who aided and abetted the coin forgers also met the same fate. In 1687, in Bremen, a man was boiled to death in oil for providing valuable assistance to coin forgers who had managed to escape justice. The Medieval Asia the medieval Asian era also recorded the use of this brutal punishment method. During this time, political upheaval and social unrest caused several regions to often go to war or engage in battles. In the 16th century Japan, there was an outlaw hero, Ishikawa Gomen, who was reputed to be a ninja with mind-blowing combat skills. His daring exploits had been the subject of numerous legends and stories. Goman had attempted to assassinate a despotic warlord. Still, despite his best efforts, Goman failed to kill the warlord and was subsequently captured and punished with a gruesome death alongside his son, who was still a baby at the time. They were sentenced to be boiled alive. Goman's son died first, leaving Goman to hold his child as he slowly succumbed to the boiling water. In Delhi, a Sikh martyr, Bai Deala, was also boiled in a pot in 1675 for refusing to accept Islam. And let's go back further to the era after Christ. We can see that this inhumane punishment has been long used to execute people, like the attempted execution of John, who miraculously escaped. So, what do you think? Is any other execution in history more gruesome than being boiled alive in water or oil? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and that will be all for today. If you like our video, please remember to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos. Until we come your way again next time with an insane story. Bye for now.